This is a quick tutorial of some logic gates and circuits that you can build in Portal 2. First one here is a NAND gate. This is the logical opposite of an AND. Where an AND is on only if both inputs are on, the NAND is only off if both inputs are on. So we're going to use a laser emitter and catcher to be our gate, and we're going to use two pressure plates as our inputs and the output is going to be shown by a light bridge. So both buttons are connected to the emitter and at this point we have an AND. To turn this into an AND, an and we have to start the emitter enabled. I'm going to connect the catcher to our light bridge and we now have our full NAND gate. Quick build. So here's our NAND gate. Both inputs are off, so the output is on. Placing the first cube on the first pressure plate, and the output is still on. And place the second cube here onto the second, and our output turns off because both inputs are on. I remove the initial cube here, you see that things turn back on, and there is our NAND gate. From here you can use a NAND to build quite a few other circuits. This is a second logic gate. This is an XOR gate or an exclusive OR. Uh, the way that this one works is that the output is off if both inputs are off or if they're both on. It's only on when one or the other of the inputs is on. This is actually built out of four NAND gates and again we're going to use a light bridge to show our output. So what we need to do is each of these buttons connects up to the first NAND gate and we'll start it enabled so it's actually a NAND gate uh, in the set uh, that I'm sorry the first NAND gate we're going to go ahead and wire that one up and it connects to each of the second layer NAND, NAND gates now the left button also connects to that left NAND gate here and the right button connects to the right NAND gate in the second layer. Start these both enabled so that they're actually NANDs. And then the final emitters, I mean catchers from the second layer of NAND gates connects to the final NAND gate, which will be our output. Start enabled and we'll connect the output catcher to the light bridge. Okay, so this is our exclusive OR gate. The output is currently off because both inputs are off. So I'm going to drop one of these cubes onto an input to turn it on, and as we can see, the output has turned on. Drop the other one on, and the output turns off because both inputs are on. I'll pull the initial cube off again, and output comes on because the other input is on, and now they're both off. So that's the first way that you can build an exclusive OR gate. Okay, this is actually the second way you can build an XOR gate. And this time we're going to use tractor beam emitters. So we're going to take the left input button, connect it to the upper left tractor emitter, change its active state. Uh, that one button will also connect to the lower. The right button connects to the upper right emitter. Again, we're just changing the active state of each emitter, and it also connects to the lower. Now, all three tractor beams need to start enabled. Now, this button on the lower emitter actually connects to each of the upper emitters. Again, it just changes the active state. And at this point, the two buttons here are going to be our uh, outputs, so we're going to take and connect them up to a NAND gate. And that needs to be start enabled. The emitter will connect to the light bridge. I'm sorry, the catcher will connect to the light bridge. And we have our full exclusive OR, or XOR gate. Quick build. 
Okay, now this is our XOR gate using tractor beam emitters. So currently the output is off because both inputs are off. I'm going to go ahead and drop the first cube on and we see the output turns on. Uh, let's turn the other input on and we see it turns off because they're both on, both inputs are on. Uh, you'll notice that there's just a little bit of lag in how it operates, but otherwise it does work. Pull the first input off and output turns on because we only have one input on. And we can pull the other one off. I find this one to be a little bit more visually interesting, although it does have that downside of a little bit of lag. Okay, we're actually moving on from logic gates to a circuit. In this case, we have a half adder. And it's called the half adder because it does not accept the carry-in bit from a previous adder. Uh, this makes it perfect for the first adder in a cascading series of multi-bit adders uh, because you won't actually have a carry-in and it uses less components as a result of not accepting the carry-in. The half adder is actually built out of an XOR and an AND gate. So let's go ahead and hook up the XOR. So we're going to hook up first button to the first NAND, second button to the first NAND. Uh, that right button is actually going to hook up to the second right NAND. Left button hooks up to the second left NAND. Uh, the emitter, I'm sorry, the catcher from the first NAND connects up to each of the NANDs in the second layer. Uh, let's go ahead and just make each of these start enabled. And the uh, final two catchers feed into the last NAND gate. And that's our output. So start enabled. Uh, we're going to use the right light bridge here on the left. That's going to show our operation of our uh, bit addition. So we hook that up to the output of the last NAND. Now to do the carry bit, we connect each button up to our AND. And as you can see, it's an AND because we're not going to start it enabled. From its catcher, we're going to connect it to the light bridge that we're going to use to signif uh, signify the carry bit. And that'll be the right bit. Okay, so here's our half adder. As we can currently see, each bit is off, so they're both that's zero plus zero. And as we can see, it's zero. Let's go ahead and drop the first cube on the first pressure plate. So that's one plus zero, and that's equal to one. Let's go ahead and move it to the other pressure plate. Again, it's zero plus one now and that's still one. So let's drop the other cube on and this will be one plus one is two. So there's the half adder. Uh, the carry out bit would actually be wired in as your carry in on the next adder unit if you were doing a two, three, or four bit adder. Okay, this is our final circuit. This is a full adder. Uh, it's called a full adder because it accepts the carry-in bit from a previous adder or half adder. Uh, so it makes it appropriate for the second or third or fourth bit of a ripple adder. Uh, so let's just pretend that we've gone ahead, that we're, you know, this is the second bit from the previous half adder, uh, which would make it a two-bit adder. So this consists of two XORs, two ANDs, and an OR. What we're going to do is we're just going to use this button here to simulate the input of the carry-in bit from a previous adder or half adder. Uh, and these two buttons are going to be our bits on this portion of the operation. So these would be the second bit in a binary number. So these would each be equal to 1, 0, or 2. Uh, the outputs are going to be out light bridges. Uh, and the result of this will be the 1, 0 bit, or 2. And the second light bridge is the carry out, 
and in our theoretical uh, example here, this would be the third bit in a binary number, or the 100 num uh, bit. Uh, so for the XORs, we're going to just go ahead and use the uh, tractor beam method to create the XORs. So let's go ahead and hook up the first one. This should look pretty, pretty familiar uh, from everything else I've done here. Again, these are just changing the active states. And the output goes to a NAND gate. <clears throat> of course, this needs to start enabled, as do the tractor beams. Okay, so this XOR gate is going to feed forward into the next XOR as one of the inputs. The second input is the carry in bit. And these all need to start enabled. And this needs to start enabled. And the output from this second XOR unit, which is this NAND, is actually our result of the bit sum. So we're going to go ahead and connect that to the left light bridge. Now we need to hook up the carry out bit. And the result of that is the OR of the two ANDs. Again, this is two XORs, two ANDs, and an OR. I haven't actually looked at the OR before. It's actually created out of two laser emitters to a laser relay. Uh, the emitters start disabled, and the relay needs to be mounted to either the ceiling or the floor. If you connect it to a uh, wall, even though you have the uh, laser emitters look like they're lined up, on the relay by pulling their uh, handles to the ceiling or to the floor, or in this case towards the wall that you have the emitter, uh, the relay connected to, it actually won't activate the relay. So I'm going to just go ahead and hook up our carry out bit because the OR, the result of the OR, is our carry out. <clears throat> the inputs for the OR is these two ANDs. So we'll just go ahead and hook up their outputs to each of these laser emitters. Let's make certain that these start disabled. Okay, so that's all correctly hooked up. And the inputs to our ANDs is one of the ANDs is the connected to our carry-in bit as well as it is connected to the output of our, uh, my apologies, it's actually connected to the output of the first OR. The second AND is connected to each of the input bits. And there we have the final hookup. Okay, this is our full ladder. As you can see, everything is off. Uh, the carry bit is off, and both light bridges signifying our outputs are off. Uh, so everything is 0 plus 0 equals 0. Uh, let's just pretend that we have it hooked up to the previous half adder, and we activated both of its inputs. So that would be 1 plus 1, which is 2, which would have activated its carry bit, which we can simulate here. And we can see the output is 0, 1, 0, or 2. So we're going to pull this off. And let's pretend that we're adding 1, 0. So the carry bit would be off. 
uh, because we don't have anything carried in from before. One of these inputs would be on because that's really 2 plus 0 and the output is 0, 1, 0 or 2. Okay, so let's just pretend that we're adding 2 plus 2. Carry in bit would be off. Each of these would be activated and the output is 1, 0, 0 or 4. Uh, you'll notice that there was a little bit of lag with that. So again, we're back to 2. Let's uh, pretend that we're adding 3 plus 1. So that would have been 1, 1 and 0, 1. So since the first bit on our theoretical half adder here would have been 1 and 1, carry bit would be activated and again we get 4. Now let's pretend that we've activated all the bits on our 2-bit number that we're working with here. So the first one would be 1, 1 added together. That would activate its carry bit which we've done by putting the weight over there. Uh, we've already got the one here and let's go ahead and add the other one. Drop it on. And what we get is 3 plus 3 is 6 and this is 1, 1, 0. So there's the full adder. Uh, enjoy!